All right. Take two. <laughs> oh, really quickly. My apologies. Last week, the kitten disconnected my audio. This time, I don't know <laughs> what just happened. My apologies for that. Um, I still do have a few minutes left, so I wanted to just make sure to get back on for a moment and answer a few more questions. <laughs> Appreciate your guys' patience. All right, Missy, what do you think about David Hawkins letting go in terms of manifesting? Good question. Um, and I... Uh, and forgive me if I don't know specifically like what his terms are as far as letting go. Um, but in when it comes to detachment, when it comes to that surrender, yes, we do want to do that. But we can't do it by force either. That's the thing. Detachment is something that happens naturally. It happens once we truly get to that new place of being, that new place that new state of consciousness, right? Like when we change the self, we're naturally going to detach from the old story, the old assumptions, the old perceptions, all the prejudice or bias that we may have had. All of that's going to go. All of that's going to go. So letting go is not really something that we do intentionally or, or by like willpower. It's, it's a process that happens naturally on this journey. So yeah. If we're supposed to constantly do imaginal acts, doesn't that mean we're putting the desire on a pedestal and trying so hard for it? Aren't we supposed to not feel the need to do sats or any technique? That is where we ideally want to get to, yes. we. The aim is to get to the place where we no longer have any need or desire to do a technique because we're in the Sabbath effectively, right? That's what that means. Um, and yes, to be clear that we shouldn't be trying so hard at this. If it feels like we're trying hard, we're putting way too much degree of effort into it. And the main reason that Neville Goddard almost exclusively talked about sats as far as as far as implementation goes one moment as far as implementation the reason that neville talks so much about sats is because getting in that drowsy state lessens the effort right so it's going to feel effortless the more that we are in that drowsy state so I know, yes, it sounds like a contradiction, but the entire point is to change ourself and how we feel, what we believe and assume. And sometimes in, in order to do that, we need to use the imaginal acts, right? I hope that makes sense. Eclipse chaos, even without the kitten. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's in timeout for this room for a while. But I do have new baby kittens. They're not old enough to, to uh, wreak havoc just yet. So they're about this big. <laughs> they're the harmless kind. So yeah, I hope that made sense, Stardust. Um, if we are constantly trying to do something, then that's clearly stemming from a place of lack. Yes. Which is why one of the ways that was most emphasized and taught by Neville is to first get in the drowsy state because you're going to be able to keep your attention on the imaginal act without effort. It's going to feel more effortless. Yay, kittens! Yeah! They're so cute. They turn two weeks old tomorrow. All right. Oh. <laughs> 
did I have any birds before land on your SP journey? So I did make a video talking about birds before land. Um, fairly recent video. Uh, I would check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but if, if we're talking about signs or anything like that, uh, there was radio silence leading up to the two of us getting back together. Like I, I did not have any signs that I could speak of, at least not that I can remember. <laughs> this was a little while ago too, but no. Um, I did have other people show up differently. If that's what you, if that's what you mean, like I did absolutely start to notice that other people were showing up in ways that more reflected the state that I was beginning to occupy more often. So as I was working on myself, as I was reconditioning a lot of these old fears and insecurities, as I began to feel more confident, I naturally did start to notice other people showing up differently, 100%. Oh my gosh, they're just jelly beans. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. They're so stinking cute. All right, I got time for a couple more, a couple more questions. What do I do when I want to focus on myself to improve my self-concept, but I keep getting thoughts of my SP that make me feel sad? Good question. Um, so if you're noticing that there's still a lot of intrusive thoughts coming up and and it's, it's having an effect on you, uh, which is normal. I, I'd say virtually everybody experiences this at some point on this journey. Um, I would practice, if you're not already meditating on a daily basis, I would start doing so. I would start to practice getting into a more relaxed state when you imagine. When, when, you, when you go within to imagine that desired outcome, make sure that you are first deeply, deeply relaxed, as relaxed as possible. Um, when we are very anxious, when we're very uptight, if we're very tense, it's going to feel very difficult to accept a new and loving idea, in this case, uh, of, of our person, right? Uh, it's going to feel difficult to accept the desired outcome. There, there's likely going to be more resistance when we're more anxious. Um, so if, if you want to cut a lot of that out, definitely recommend practicing and implementing SATS meditation and just getting more familiar with a relaxed state. In that relaxed state, you're going to notice significantly less resistance. And that's really the, the best time for leaving that new impression, those new ideas. Hello, Travis. Absolutely, it did. Absolutely, it did. Everybody will be getting their uh, everybody will be getting their welcome packets and onboarding today. Rest assured. I don't know if you were here earlier. Um, this morning there was an outage. It's been a fun day <laughs> with all the uh, with all the fun things going on. But yes, everybody's going to be getting uh, everything to make sure that they're onboarded and ready for tomorrow. And I am so excited to have you join. Oh yay! Thoughts on dealing, oh, Northwest Wind, this is a great question. Thoughts on dealing with opposing inner conversations. Should we redirect them on the spot or does the imaginal act shift them? Is it best to just be mindful and still the mind or practice redirect? Good question. Yeah. So if we are able to redirect, like, yes, 
Part of why I recommend the focus attention meditation is because it is a great practice in helping us with redirection. Like when a thought comes in, when we notice our mind trailing off, we just gently redirect it as soon as we become aware of it. And practicing doing that is going to be immensely helpful for a number of reasons on this journey. Um, but that's, you know, that to say, if, if we're noticing perhaps like insistent intrusive thoughts or um, if despite redirecting, it's it's like continuing to come back. Most importantly, just just observe, just observe, because we, we don't want to like engage with those intrusive thoughts. We don't want to try to push back or fight against them because that's going to get exhausting really fast. So as we imagine, as we begin to recondition the self, as we begin to change these beliefs that we hold on to, we're going to naturally notice a change in the inner world, right? There's going to naturally be a change to our thoughts. There's going to naturally be a change in how we feel. So that's, that's kind of what it means when we say like, do nothing, because so long as you are going to that end, so long as you are feeling into that desired outcome and it resonates and it feels good, it feels enjoyable, like you will begin to naturally notice a change in how you feel and, and how you react in the day to day. And that includes these intrusive conversations and things like that. Um, so I know that may have been a little bit all over the place, but practice focused attention meditation, because if we can gently redirect, then by all means do so. But if it if it's something that's insistent, if we are noticing a lot of the same intrusive thoughts coming back to us, don't fight it, don't engage with it. <laughs> Just observe it, let it be. And as soon as you are able to, go within, go into imagination. Those imaginal acts are planting seeds. And those seeds are what causes a change in our behavior and how we feel and ultimately what reflects in our 3D. So, yeah. Sounds like Eclipse Mayhem. <laughs> nah. Nah, although I am excited for that eclipse. That's going to be cool to watch. But I used to believe in, like, Mercury, Mercury retrograde and then, like, the planets doing all kinds of funky, faulty things. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you, RDA. That is really sweet. Thank you. I'm good to have you here. Could you please talk about, this is a good question. Could you please talk about the fear of not getting the manifestations and the impatience sometimes I have about the manifestation not showing up in the 3D reality? Yes. So the fear of not, getting the manifestation, that that's a very common one. And I recently made a video talking about the fear of failure. Um, before we have really built our faith in the law, before we really trust that the law is real, it's very common and, and likely that you're gonna have some of those fears that what if this doesn't work? What if I'm wasting my time? Things like that. Um, it, that's completely normal. And I mean, first thing to note is the more that we build our faith and trust, the less naturally we're going to have those types of fears. So along with what we are aiming to manifest, we want to make sure that we are also continuing to build our faith. And we do that through a variety of ways, but namely observation. You can make a list of items that you desire to manifest, small insignificant things. Um, but if you're gonna go that route, make sure you set it and forget it. 
Uh, the more we go looking for our manifestations, the more elusive they will be. They will show up when you are not looking for them. <laughs> um, but building faith is a must. Uh, let me go back, just make sure. Question. And the impatience sometimes. Um, if, if we are noting a feeling of impatience, that is feedback to us. That's feedback that in that moment, at least in that moment that you're experiencing that impatience, you're not in the state that you want to be in, basically. You, you are, clearly, if I'm in a state of impatience, I'm in a state of not having it. I am aware of not having my desire. I'm, in, I'm embodying the state of I don't have it. So to combat that, we want to go within and we want to have the experience of it, right? That's indication that we want to go within. We need to imagine. We need to put ourselves back in the state of the wish fulfilled is what that means. Yeah. And, and to be clear, we do not want to get in the habit of checking the 3D for validation, engaging our success on the 3D. That's a habit we have to break. Have to break. Yeah. So I think most important things, if, if these are what you're noting coming up for you, building trust and faith in the law, and just observing that when you notice that feeling of impatience, that's just indication that you want to go back to the end. You want to go back within and you want to imagine you want to go to the end until you feel again that feeling of satisfaction that comes with the wish fulfilled. Yeah. Can we see more of your kittens? <laughs> I have to go feed them here in just a moment. Um, I might pop back on for uh, a little bit I might, uh, to show you guys. They're in the uh, <laughs> they're in the nursery. We set up a little kitten nursery. They're in the, they're in their incubator. Um, but I may pop on for a few minutes uh, to show you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You will see the kittens. Rest assured. They're so cute. Lost my spot. Is thinking I'm with my SP now and I know what happens. It's unfolding now the same thing. Um, no, I don't, if I'm understanding your question, um, thinking I'm with my SP now and I know what happens. It's unfolding now. Uh, not quite. One implies that it's, it's already done. The other implies it's, it's going to happen. Right. Um, which one is resonating with you is the question. Because when, when we say like, I'm with my SP now, like it may not be that the, that is the case in the 3D. But if you are in the Sabbath, it's still going to feel like that sense of this is already something I've experienced. Um, I made a video recently talking about this and I might need to make another one to break it down because I know it's really confusing for a lot of people about like the whole, like, is it, am I living in the end now or is it going to happen? Like, do I imagine that it's already happened or do I say it's going to happen? Like, I, I get the confusion behind that. Um, ideally, we want to be imagining from the place of like in the 4D, in imagination, we've already experienced, we've already selected that reality. Important thing to note about imagination, we have to start to look at our imagination not as fantasy or fiction, but as a preview to another reality entirely. It's, it's very much real. So if I have this imaginal experience and I feel it, it I, I feel like it is happening while I'm imagining, that means it's already happened. That means I have 
experienced and previewed that reality. And by doing so, I've selected it. And that is what becomes the 3D experience. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah. Thank you, Jaylene. Can anyone recommend a focus attention meditation on YouTube? Um, I might have some, I have a whole ass playlist with a bunch of meditations, um, but a lot, one of my favorite focus attention meditations is on the um, Insight Timer app. I think that's what it's called. There's a the plethora of meditations on that app. Um, and if you type in focused attention in the search bar, you'll get a few that come up for you. And, and I mean, a lot of the ones in there are really, really good. But you you can even do focused attention you know, without the aid of YouTube or or an app. All you really all you're really doing in focused attention is just picking a focal point. In a lot of cases, it's the breath. And you're just keeping your attention on your breath, the physical sensation of the breath. And when your mind wanders, which it will, <laughs> when it wanders, as soon as you become aware that your mind has wandered, you just gently redirect it back. And you practice that. Yeah. All right. Hey, Missy, is it better to just move on and believe that I can find an even better SP who unfollowed me in our friendship group that blocked me? Or should I just persist in manifesting them? Oh, oh that's that's a good question. I mean, unfortunately, I, I can't tell you which one would be better because it's very much going to be different for everybody. But ultimately, it, it is whatever feels best for you like whatever you desire to do. And I would maybe take a moment to just meditate on that, reflect on that. Is what I desire a brand new relationship? Do I want to manifest a whole new person into my life? Right? Um, the one thing that I will say is I, I don't ever want people to feel discouraged, like, you know, feel like they have to select a new partner because they don't think that they can get their SP back. Like if, if, if that is the reasoning behind what you're deciding to do here, um, know that it's the case that you can manifest anything. You can experience anything. Regardless of what happened, regardless of the past, regardless of current circumstance, none of that matters. So if, if what you ultimately desire is that relationship with your SP, then that's the route I would take. But again, reflect on that and see what comes up for you. Yeah. <laughs> Are you still live or is this a glitch? <laughs> uh, this is absolutely a glitch. I'm not really here. None of this is real. <laughs> I'm joking. This is still alive. I came back on for just a moment. Oh, you guys are so incredibly sweet. My friends and family are not a big fan of SP because they don't understand that our journey, any advice on how to handle that? <sighs> and I, yeah, no, I, I know how 
frustrating it can feel um, when when dealing with people in our 3D that are not approving. Um, but I, I would I would again remind that everyone is you pushed out. So people are showing up in our world the way that they are because of the assumptions that we have about them. So if I assume that my friends and family don't approve of my person, naturally that's what is gonna to continue to be reflected to me. So I would focus in that case on reconditioning those beliefs and assumptions, which again, I know that it may not feel like the easiest thing in the world, especially if we are dealing with them in the day to day, but that's absolutely something that I would, I, I would imagine hearing a congratulations from, you know, somebody from your friend or family group. I would imagine hearing, receiving their blessing and how excited they are for you and how happy they are for you that the two of you are back together and doing better than ever. Yeah, just my two cents. Oh, hi, Missy. I appreciate you so much for taking such a holistic approach and anxious newbie conscious approach to teaching love assumption to people. It goes a long way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, Fernando. I appreciate that. I try to be the person that I wish I had when I was going through the thick of it. That That's always kind of my MO. I always try to be for people what I wish I had on my journey when I was in the throes of panic and spiral and fear and uncertainty and, and yeah. 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 <laughs> I am just a hologram. Some days I wake up feeling awesome that I'm going to manifest my SP back. Other days I wake up feeling like crap. Any drills when I wake up feeling like crap? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, th there can be, at first, a degree of double-mindedness, right? Like, as we're acclimating to a new state, a new belief, a new assumption, uh, it, it can feel like we're going back and forth. That That's not uncommon that that is actually quite normal um change does not always come easy for us that's how we are wired and conditioned as humans um it, it's a very ego defense thing but on those mornings when you're feeling not so great um not so good i know it sounds counterintuitive but for the love of everything don't try to fight it don't try to fight the thoughts. Don't try to push back. Don't try to force yourself to feel good in that moment. Um, you're more than likely going to notice a lot of resistance if you, if you aim to do so. Um, on those mornings that we feel like crap, I mean, number one, if we need to react, if we can't help but feel sad in that moment, you know, be in a place of acceptance, be in a place of just observing, you know, taking any feedback from what you're feeling. Meditation is a game changer. Maybe just take a moment to go within, do some breathing exercises, help yourself first to alleviate that feeling of anxiousness or sadness or whatever might be the underlying feeling that you have. And if you need to do something nice for yourself, do something for yourself that maybe will help you perk up or feel a bit better. I mean, that's why first and foremost, we have to take care of ourselves. We have to take care of our well-being in a way that's not trying to like push and force a good feeling. Like we, we can't lie to ourselves. <laughs> we, we can't lie to ourselves. So, I mean, just first understand that this is something that a lot of people do experience on their journey up from time to time. We may have moments of back and forth and double-mindedness, and that's okay. 
doesn't mean you fail, doesn't mean that you're not going to make it. I, on those bad mornings, just take care of you. Do whatever you can to help yourself feel even a little bit better. Even if that means just doing something completely unrelated to manifestation. You know, ordering some of your favorite food, going for a walk, what, whatever that might be. Do something nice for yourself. And then when you do start to notice yourself feeling a little bit better, when you are feeling on the upswing, that's where we want to really take advantage. We really want to go all in when we are feeling as relaxed and good as possible. Yeah, just my two cents. Just my two cents. Oh my goodness, I just saw the time. On that note, I, I do have to go for real this time. I gotta go feed some babies. But thank you guys so much for being here. My apologies for that glitch earlier. I don't know. <laughs> we'll make sure that, you know, next week I will make sure to also bring the kittens on board. I, I, I may go live for a little bit later this afternoon and show you guys the kittens. We shall see. But thank you all so much for joining. Thank you for being here. Much love to each and every one of you. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. And until next time, do take care of yourself. All of you. <laughs> Much love. Ah, bye. <laughs>